Okay, so uh, welcome to remote control. Uh, today is more of a remote need. Uh, this talk will be done on a slightly different format. It will be a dialogue between two friends, in my case, in this case, me and Carlos. Uh, I will ask you, because this is not in the webinar format in Zoom, just please have your microphone muted during the presentation. Thank you very much. Carlos. Hello, Nuno. How are Hi, you? Carl. It's been a long time. Yeah, it's true. I'm, I must confess, I'm a bit stressed with everything that's going on with the world right now with this virus. Okay, it's bad to see that. As you know, I'm still living here in the middle of nowhere. And what about you? I heard you moved to a different place. What have you been doing? I moved to the big city and created my own company of uh, electric scooters. You know, it's quite fashion, so I'm earning good money. Okay, so as you know, I've created my own company here in the middle of nowhere. But now, due to this uh, pandemic of the coronavirus, I have this problem because everyone needs to, to work from home. So I'm trying to adapt my, my company so that everyone can work remotely in a, in a proper way. Do you have any advices regarding this? Okay, let's clarify first, because there's different shades of uh, remoteness as Martin Fuller mentioned in a blog post. So there's the single site where people work from home, but they're all co-located. The multi-site team where there's two or more co-located groups uh, at separate locations within a larger uh, team. Uh, there's the satellite workers, so we have uh, uh, a big um, co-located team and then people uh, here and there working remotely. And there are the remote first companies, which nowadays are becoming a bit more, more common. Companies like 37 Cycles and, and others. Well, everything is online. Okay, so what you're saying is that this uh, working remotely is something very common nowadays. I've heard about this. So do you know why this happens? Why are so many companies working remotely? Is it because it's cheaper? Well, nowadays with, uh, with COVID-19, everybody should be remote, first of all. But uh, if we weren't in this situation, a lot of people will tell you that the first reason would be cheaper labor costs. Although I don't believe that it's not just that. Um, in, in, in a lot of markets, and um, uh, it's hard to find resources, good resources. Uh, and it, it basically started if you looked at San Francisco, which house prices are very high. Um, uh, and, it's, and it came to Europe too, Berlin, even Lisbon and, and Porto and perhaps other cities have these resource constraints. So basically it's a war on talent, but talent won. Okay, so I see the advantages of this. So what kind of people should I search for my, for my team? Or the other way around, what kind of training should I give my, my employees so that they can work uh, remotely in a very efficient way. Okay, so with this whole situation at hand, there's fortunately the community and the whole world is getting together. And if you go just simply through LinkedIn, there's a lot of webinars nowadays. So people are transferring a lot of the what they were doing uh, on site to, to online. So uh, the community is moving everything, even meetups. And apart from that, you always have a, a lot of websites like Udemy, Coursera, R Learning O'Reilly, and others where you can learn stuff uh, for the remote teams. In terms of people, um, nowadays, apart from the needs, you should try to aim, if you're starting the company, for uh, people a bit more mature in terms of used to work in a remote environment uh, and responsible people that you feel that you can trust and make them uh, accountable. Okay, so is there any easy way to understand if they are mature and responsible? Okay, so contrary to what people might think, um, working with agile methodologies, which I know you're a big fan, and especially remote, needs a lot of discipline, uh, especially around communication. And with that comes practice. We need to practice, practice, practice. Um, and a an very important thing is that you teach everyone has a, a grown-up. 
Um, that's the kind of attitude you should ask for in any of your co-workers, because if you treat them like children, they will behave as one. So do you mean that I should avoid hiring junior developers? Is that it? No, 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 no. That's not what I'm saying, Carlo. So you should hire juniors too. People have to start somewhere, right? Uh, they just, you just need to be aware that they will need more coaching uh, and, and training in these practices. So uh, if possible, not at the moment, uh, to uh, co-locate it might be better as a starting point. And it's always good to have a blend of both until you feel that they've matured in this kind of practices to just let them go. Not out of the company, okay? Okay, so, but I'm still a bit concerned uh, when people are working remotely, if they are really working or if they are at a coffee shop or, or at a park or something like that. How can I understand if they're really working? Okay, so there's a great myth that remote workers are slackers. Uh, uh, so there's a misconception that if you can't physically see someone sitting at their desk doing work, then they're not getting anything done. So it's a matter of delivering work. I believe nowadays with so many people working from, from home not has a need, uh, people might start changing their minds about remote workers. Okay, so let me rephrase my question then. So how can I know at what time are the employees working then? Okay, so team calendar. Uh, there's a lot of good tools around that, especially if you use like a G Suite with Google Calendar. It's very easy to put your office hours, holidays, meeting compromises, and so on, so that your team and your company is aware if they need to talk to you. So I think this is a good uh, trick, but it's, it's quite important, Carlos, and to set strict working hours. So remote doesn't mean always available. Okay, uh, just as you would be in the office. So the work-life separation, although we only have one life, um, which should be a blend, is still very possible. I would say at home, it's important if you can find, if you have that possibility of, of having a different space where you can disconnect. So when you finish, you get out of that space and go to your living room. If you have a, an office at home, would be cool. Okay, so but what we, we talked about now, the remote workers being slackers and let's say the opposite of remote working being always available, these are two myths, right? So how do you think this, this myth affect the, the company culture? Okay, it's true that in some way uh, you lose uh, the kitchen interactions or the casual hallway stop and chats on remote teams. So it's very important that you bake social moments into the remote dynamics. So, uh, and apart from that, people should have periodic FaceTimes to improve their relationships. So Carlos, see, you don't need to control anyone. You just need to enable the system for, for your company. Okay, but to enable the system, as you're saying, I need to trust people. And I imagine that trusting is a bit harder to have in remote teams. Do you have any advice or any tips and tricks in how to build trust when we are working in a remote environment? Okay, so uh, communication is a two-way street. So make sure you listen as much as you talk. So on, in online communication, especially in written one, it's better to over communicate than the other way around. So if you use a tool like Slack, make sure that you post the info needed on different channels on, on a channel that everyone is. Uh, just don't use the ad here uh, unless it's really urgent, but it's really important that the info goes to and everyone that should have that information. Okay, and what about FaceTime? Uh, should we try to, to find FaceTime? It's important to introduce co-location and FaceTime whenever possible, or at least at the beginning of the project, although in Portugal today, no, and probably for a long time, but in the, in the normal occasion, it's fundamental. Okay, but in a way, this means that we should be treating everyone the same way, being them remotely or, or not, right? Yeah, that's very important. Glad you raised it, that, Carlos, because offer challenging and interesting work 
to all teams and don't treat someone like a sec second class citizen, it's very important. So make sure that independently of the shade of remoteness as we talked a bit ago, uh, that you are doing as a company or as a team, it's really important that you treat everyone equally. Okay. Getting back to, to FaceTime, as you know, nowadays due to the pandemic, FaceTime is pretty much impossible or at least it's not encouraged. So imagine I'm, uh, let's say, kicking off a new project at my company. How can we move forward without uh, FaceTime at the beginning? Okay, so uh, keep your, use video. Okay, video is key and keep the camera on when you're doing a uh, call. So when people are seeing faces, they will feel more comfortable with each other. Uh, it's important that you participate and mute your microphone. Um, keep your phones face down uh, because it should be as a matter of respect. You cannot close your laptop as you were in a physical space and ensure you have a clear visible uh, that you show clear visible on your uh, video camera. So it's really important that when we're doing uh, video chats that we, we have eye contact with people that are on the other side. That helps a lot in, in comms. Okay, so and, um, does this also apply to if I'm in the, uh, in the office meeting with people in the same room? Okay. Very good, very good point. Uh, well, the rule of one remote equals all remotes, it means that this will help. So uh, even if you're, uh, imagine Carlos that you're the one in Cascos Rolha, middle of nowhere, uh, and you have all the rest of the group uh, in, in a living room. Um, you will feel that distance and this will make, you'll feel disconnected some way, unless you have a lot of practice and the, whoever is facilitating knows. If, if not, the people, in a meeting room, what ends because it's it's human nature. It's very hard to it's it's hard to contradict. Not impossible. People will tend to start not only due to body language, they will tend to start a discussion within the room. Uh, so if you try to practice this, uh, if you have a satellite or a group of people, uh, although they're not the maturity, try to follow this rule. You'll see that it will help you out. Okay, but in a way, what we've been talking about is basically the same thing as defining our ways of working or defining a team charter for, for a team, right? Yep, so agree on, on team norms. So uh, independently of teams being co-located or distributed, it's very important that you agree on goals, practices, process, tools, meetings. So set clear guidelines and imagine if you have um, a, t a company like 37 Signals and WordPress, they have budgets for the teams to travel to be co-located and a team zone it so they can do end-to-end -end in all their flows. And this practice, whatever you call it, ways of working, team norms, team charter, I know there's other names, I don't recall all of them right now, but it's one of the best ways to support distributed work. Have clear practices. Okay. Do you have any example of these ways of working for remote teams? Uh, fortunately, a lot of these companies that are remote first are publishing um, a lot of their ways of working online. So companies like 37 Signals, Hotchar, which they have this example of, uh, of how do they set up usually a, a, a remote uh, team. Uh, I cannot give you my personal ones uh, for for the sake of this conversation, um, but there are a lot of ways to do this. It's just if you search online, you'll find you find even more from some companies. And apart from that, just be creative and adapt to your needs. Okay, but if we have everyone working the same way, let's say strictly following the the rules or ways of working of a team, in a way we will be adding constraints, right? So. That won't allow people to experiment and improve on their own practices. What do you think? Well, my vision on this is foster consistency, but allow for local variance. So if it's something that you need to centralize globally, like a all hands or a company meeting, it's important that you keep a constant schedule. Uh, but apart from that, allow for the teams to adapt. So decentralize urgent or locally relevant decision-making. That's very important for you to be agile. 
Okay, I'm still trying to figure out what are the best tools for, for people to make their life easier when working remotely. Do you have any examples of tools that will ease this process? Well, first of all, Carlos, it's not the tools that are important, but what you do with them and uh, how they adapt to your needs. So I use a lot. So Slack, uh, Zoom, the one we're using currently right now, there's uh, Miro, Trello, and there are a lot of uh, tools rather than these ones that, uh, that I'm sharing here with you, which just, again, adapt to your needs. And for sure, you'll find some tools that will help you out within the, the current market. Okay. Uh, my team uh, is currently working in pair programming. Do you know about any tools that make pair programming uh, remotely possible? Yeah, some of the ones that I already showed you, so uh, Slack or Zoom are some of the screen sharing tools, uh, but can become a bit hard uh, when someone wants to share the control. Uh, so there's Tuple. Uh, which is a logo in the middle. It's a tool that's designed specifically for remote pair programming, and it's far superior than the other two tools mentioned. It has a caveat, it has a significant price, so it just depends on what are your needs and what is your budget. Okay, so besides the tools, do you have any tips regarding uh, communication within the teams? Okay, so uh, don't nag people all the time. It's, it's one of the advices. Instead of uh, and nagging, I know it's a strong word. Uh, you can try to mention them in a trail or Jira card where you're working on. So we imagine this is the, the similarity of being in the office and you want to be focused. You want to be in the zone and someone taps you on the shoulder every five to 10 minutes. So um, if you do this and if you have these practices or whatever setup it works for, to, for people to gain focus. This will allow people to respond when they have time. Uh, and if you document the, the info, you'll have the history of the developments in the card or board that they belong to. Uh, another one is, and this is general for absences. It's just, as we talked a, while, a bit ago about team calendar, uh, before going on holidays or being absent, just uh, go to your team channel if you have use like something like Microsoft Teams or Slack and let everyone know uh, if you're going to be away, tentative for how long, if you're sick, you don't know, it's true, but try to lower the risk and talk about the dependencies or whatever it's needed for you to be away with no, no other issue uh, harming the, the team and, and the value you want to deliver to your client. The other day I was having a phone call with a friend and he was in a coffee shop and I had a really, really hard time understanding what he was saying. Do you have any experience preventing this from happening with uh, remote teams? Yeah, try to avoid working from noisy places or, or even places with low bandwidth. So if you, throw, if you have, a, it's important that you have a good headset with uh, with the microphone, especially with noise cancelling, like mine can help. Uh, and uh, apart from that, especially if you're working in a noisy environment or you know you might be interrupted, just try to mute your microphone when you're not talking. You usually have shortcuts in your keyboard to do that and help you out. Okay, so with so many tips that you've given me, I have a more general understanding of how remote working can work. But uh, why is it that you think it's such a good option and so many companies are using it, even without the pandemic or before the pandemic virus? Well, nowadays it's a primordial lead, as, as you just mentioned, Carlos, right, with, uh, with the pandemic. But imagine you want to give, you, to give 24 seven uh, customer support. Um, your company, although the headquarters it's in, or you have several offices across the world. Um, you can try to rotate and work a bit of async and sync with different people in different time zones. That will help ease the burden of, of the different people and keep a, a sane life, but you still give this same support worldwide to your, to your clients, independently of on where they are. Um, and another tip that I can try to give you is imagine if you have the, the, the different time zones are very spread apart, so if it's a big interval, 
um, and you're hosting a recurring meeting, try to rotate the schedule uh, of that meeting to ease the, the time zone burden because sometimes it can be very late for one person and just for the sake of you doing it 9.30 or 10 a.m. So try to rotate a bit even if it means you're in your pajama just for people to avoid uh, getting into the other person's dinner or something like that if you have a big time zone difference. Okay, but uh, as you said, this means that we will be working with people from completely different uh, time zones. But this still bothers me a bit of how can we be productive when the time zones are so different. What's your experience around this? Well, the big, as I mentioned, at least from my experience, other people might have different experiences. The, the, the bigger the difference, the harder it gets doesn't mean it's impossible. So uh, you should try to agree on working hours, especially with the bigger the interval. Uh, embrace communication across these different time zones. It's important that you plan ahead. So uh, try to avoid making decisions at the 11th hour. It's still agile, okay? It may seem a bit like extra work, but in the end up, you will see that you will actually be more organized. So you you need to try to have a blend of sync versus async work. Okay, but don't you think that people working from home might have more distractions? Is this a valid perception of mine? And if, if not, how can we deal with this? Okay, working from home and typically, and let me emphasize, typically leads to less distractions. Why? Uh, you should have less office politics, uh, a quieter noise level, less or more efficient meetings, which tends to happen. The ability to dress more casually and comfortable. I don't suggest your pajamas just for you to get into the work mood. And I know a lot of companies fortunately are uh, acquiring the, the casual and comfortable way of dressing. And as mentioned above, a more personalized office environment. Um, Although if you are addicted to games, try to avoid having the console nearby, which you might, might be an, a very strong attraction. Um, but for me personally, you can work from anywhere. Uh, I don't care where people work from, as long as you feel comfortable and you are able to do your job properly and work as a team or individual, if that's the case. But working remotely, especially in, during this quarantine situation, has some downsides, like isolation, right? Do you have any advice in how to minimize these downsides? Yeah, so social isolation, it's, it's a big concern, and a lot of people are not working were pushed to, to suddenly to work remote, and they're not used. So it is needed in these days of isolation to... Um, and this is a personal advice to try to disconnect from work. So it's a, it's a fine balance. Uh, and if possible, as I mentioned, have a separate space at home um, uh, with this. And there are a couple of things that we can do uh, around this. So um, you can do uh, virtual lunch meetings um, uh, where it should be forbidden to talk uh, about work. And I know that Sarah is on the call, so thanks for setting up ours. <laughs> Um, you can have remote uh, coffee breaks. Uh, so imagine like you would pick up on a couple of colleagues and um, would go to the cafeteria or to, call, to the coffee machine. Just try to put it on the team calendars for, for you to have a, a chick chat and decompress. Or you can have like a set up, a, if you're using Zoom or any other tool, set up a, a video call where anyone that's feeling lonely can jump in and talk with colleagues. Um, or imagine in bed uh, some icebreakers in your meetings. Uh, there's a lot of them online, and there's a lot of uh, icebreaker games like these ones. I know I'm sorry, I'm a bit in the shade, just realized. But there's a lot of cards that you can embed icebreakers and online. So just Google it, um, and you'll find, and this is important to break the ice, literally. Uh, within the meetings, it will help to, to, to avoid this social isolation and to create a bond between the team members. Okay, that icebreaker's idea is, is interesting. I haven't thought about that. But I still have this question, which is, I'm, I'm very convinced about remote work, but 
but uh, I still don't understand how can we have uh, difficult conversations like, let's say, firing someone or even uh, retrospective uh, in a remote environment. What's your experience with this? Okay, first of all, uh, firing and retrospectives are quite different meetings, okay? So, um, the Esther Derby, who wrote a very known uh, retrospective book, um, uh, wrote about the eight principles for remote retrospectives. I found this very interesting to share with you because for me, it should be about remote meetings. Let me just give you a deeper dive, Carlos. So try to design the meeting to equal participation. Um, if you set up a session or a board, make sure that everyone can, can uh, uh, play around with it or, or just reach it and add it. Uh, it's very important, so structure, 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 uh, suggest sending uh, the structure ahead of time, just a simple agenda with what you wanna see discussed and what are the goals. Again, this is, some, this is quite interesting because this is quite the same as you should do, uh, even not being remote, okay? Um, the third one that Esther uh, refers to is enhance or replace visual cues. So it's harder on video, uh, it's not impossible. Uh, and, and so that you try avoid trying to interrupt, you can write on post-its, uh, be right back, or there's the collaboration superpowers cards that you can find for free online, print it, and whoever is facilitating, if you're seeing everyone, just instead of stopping, or you can point the card or write in the chat, uh, if you need to do a, a quick bathroom break or grab water or something. The fourth one is uh, remember, uh, help people remember who is there. So whenever we start, it was quite hard because we're, we're a big group uh, here, but if we were like doing a stand up, it's just say, uh, hi Carlos, and you would reply back. That way we help remind everyone, so create a connection with this one-on-one uh, -on -one and uh, wait just to get the answer that way you know that you are being heard and the other person has it's like a sound check between the two sides the fifth one it's actively engage people uh this is again where you can mention that it's easier in a room uh but especially with remote some people just disconnect so if you have a tool that you can see everyone and some uh people is person is staying silent, just try to ask for, for their opinion in the middle. So push the, the person into the conversation. That's really important so that the whole group feels engaged. The sixth is for you to know your tools. So we talked a, a, bit, a bit about some of the tools that I use. Uh, it's important to do a dry run, especially if you're using it for the first time. So um, grab your uh, your colleague, one colleague or more, and just test your tool and use more than one tool uh, if it's needed. But it's important that you know what are the, the limits, uh, what can you do with that tool that you're using. And with that, use a back channel. So imagine that uh, by any means uh, that that um, tool has a problem and just, just breaks, just have something that you can inject within the team so it doesn't stop because meetings touch points, whatever you want to call it, have a cost. Last but not least, as I already told you, don't let tools that dictate your format. So um, just think of it, there's a lot you can do nowadays uh, and, and tools are evolving a lot. So think, try to think about the format and then find the tools that best adapt your needs to help the team uh, move forward. With all the information we've been talking, I think I'm very well prepared now to change my company to be able to work fully remote. Do you have any more tips you want to share besides the one we've already spoke? Okay, I'll share a couple uh, with you that usually I try to, to avoid or, or in another way I try to do. So uh, use a proper avatar. Um, so you're not Bart Simpson, especially in, in remote companies in remote first companies, it's very hard for you to know everyone or even when big blocks of the company are, are distributed. So um, have you a proper photo of you in the global tip platform and have your name and role clear for everyone inside uh, the company and especially if you interact outside the company too. So that will help create 
um, a connection because uh, imagine you are going to, I, they say, hey, you need to talk with Carlos and I'll go to Slack to try to find you or even in Jira. And uh, what I found is I'm talking with Homer Simpson. Uh, it's good to see a face on the other side. But this practice connects with empathy, isn't it, right? Empathy is fundamental. So especially with written communication and uh, with the remote, it's, I, I would suggest that always assume positive intent. So tone and nuance can get lost over chat. So assuming your colleague is coming from a positive place helps you with any potential misunderstandings. By any means, if sometimes because it happens, we're all human, you're, uh, you're not getting there. It's better than just start a chick chat on, 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 on a chat and just start on a negative stride. Just perhaps it's better to try to do a, a quick call with that person to just clean everything and make, make everything clear to move forward. Okay. Any practice that will be encouraging empathy within the teams? Well, apart from the ones that I talked to you about, about the virtual lunches, uh, remote coffee breaks, icebreakers, although this is not, this is a bit more a two-way conversation, one-on-ones, it's very important, especially imagine in the case that you have um, collocated, the biggest part of the team is collocated and there's satellite workers. Uh, it's important for you to create uh, a, a strong connection and have constant and frequent one-on-ones with that person. But if we have, let's say, too many one-on-ones, isn't this going to create a transparency problem to other people? Well, one-on-ones should, should be, it's more of a listening exercise. So uh, it's important to create transparency. All the info that's company related uh, should be uh, kept open to and accessible to everyone. So you can log, log side chat decisions, record video meetings like we're doing now, always take notes and you can share on the public spaces or public channels that you believe that people that need to be aware will can can and will read it also don't share information with just one person in the team um if it's unless it's something really personal share it with everyone so that they feel empowered to change and comment and be accountable for that as i said before i'm very confident now that this will work but imagine i want to hire someone new to join to join my team what kind of perks should I add to the to the job offer? Okay, let's see if in the end of uh, you call it perks. So uh, there's a lot of uh, pushing the work-life balance in a lot of job offerings, but I believe personally that it's a work-life plan. So this means you only have one life, not two separate ones, and uh, your work should be as interesting as your life. Of course, that uh, especially with the remote, but this, this is a bit fizzy. Even being on site, you should try to you, you should try to aim to have some flexible schedule as long as the working time best suits you and the team you are working with. Another thing that's expected it's for you to get more free time, uh, avoiding commuting, so nobody likes to be in long traffic queues or even in the tube uh, like a sardine. So what I expect and, and uh, what is expected and from my experience is that this should lead to time saving. So uh, more time with uh, your family, extra sleeping time, no stress from the commuti commuting and the possibility to work from whatever you want as long as you have the conditions to do so. And this should lead to better health. At least that's what a lot of stats show that working from home can lead to better health in a variety of ways. So more time to, for physical activity, the ability to eat healthier, hope you can cook, Carlos, the ability to recover from illness or surgery at home, and there's the less exposure to illnesses, which nowadays it's really important, uh, and the option to create a comfortable and ergonomic workspace. I, no, no, I have to go now, but so this was a really, really good conversation. I 
uh, learned a lot. Let's keep in touch then. So goodbye. Yeah, I hope to see you in person. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, just feel free to ping me and, and we can jump into a, a video chat. It was a pleasure to, to see you. So thanks to everyone. This was the, the dialogue uh, that me and Carlos had prepped for you just before we pass to some Q&A. Uh, these were some of, uh, apart from our work for the last couple of years, uh, these were some of the books that we wanted to share with you that serve as some inspiration for this talk, apart from uh, blog posts and especially our day-to-day uh, -day work at uh, Equal Experts with different clients, especially uh, the authors from the books on the, on the right side, so Lizette Sunderland and from Work Together Anywhere and Pilar T and Maya Middle Miss from Thinking Remote. They have uh, very good podcasts. Uh, around remote work. So besides the, the books that Nuno mentioned, uh, this presentation was also built around our experience working uh, with the remote teams for the past three, four years. We've been working together on setting up teams here in Lisbon for Equal Experts to teams in this uh, countries you see here from North America to Brazil to a lot of different countries in, in Europe. So, and well, my name is Carlos. I am a software engineer at Equal Experts for the last five, uh, four years. Uh, this is Nuno. He is the delivery lead for Equal Experts too. And we've been working together for, for a long time. And this is, I hope you, you've enjoyed the presentation. Can you move to the next one? So just, yeah, so. yeah, this is like, uh, don't remember that this stay at home. This is not really a drill. This is serious. So please stay home and yeah, stay safe. Well, and if you have any questions, uh, feel f uh, feel free to, to ask them now, or we can ask uh, answer the questions that are in the in the chat. Duart, now it's up to you. No, to... There, is, there isn't questions in the chat, so if you want to 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 do your questions to them, please unmute and you you are free to speak. Don't be shy. <laughs> hey, uh, hey everybody, good, good evening. Uh, I have a question which is mostly related with Scrum meetings. Like for example, uh, this case in particular is regarding estimations. Estimations is something like, it's not a hard meeting, like something of a retrospective or firing person, but it seems to me that it's kind of half synchronous, half asynchronous. Like you need to be able to on the spot, have everybody at the same time estimate something. Do you, do you guys have any tip for this? Uh, actually, if, although we tend to push to no estimation, um, I'm going to give you the two tips that I gave a friend of mine that had the same question uh, like a week ago. Um, you can use like a um, basic spreadsheet, just put your names and when you, you can do like a one, two, three and just type the number on your cell. So you have a cell for each, each member. Uh, you can go to a Miro or a Google Draw and have uh, post-its with different colors, so one color per person. And then uh, whenever you do the one to three for people to show, you just drag the card to the middle of the table and create a virtual table uh, within a drawing. So it's just a matter of being creative with, uh, with, uh, with, to your need. And if you're more keen on using, let's say, physical things, there are also uh, cards with the numbers, let's say, with the Fibonacci sequence that you can use and show to the screen. Or you can even use a, a mobile app that uh, there are a lot of mobile apps that can do that for you. But as Nuno said at first, we try to, as much as possible, work with no estimations and measure the metrics of the team. And according to the cycle time and throughput and so on, we can understand the, how the team is going. And from that, estimate or forecast how long it's going to take to do something. Okay, thanks. Do we have any questions in the in the chat? I think so, Duarte, can you help? Yeah, there was one person asking for like a, a window to the office and Vitor Kash already answered saying that, yeah, we have this, and this window to everyone. We have all, always an open call to everyone to join during the day, especially those ones that are working alone. Um, okay, there is an, uh, a question from Rui. 
do you think there is a limit to the number of remote people in the team? Is there a limit different from a, an on-site team? Okay. Shouldn't this be? Shouldn't we follow the? How is it? The two pizza rule, right? Or the uh, so that we don't shouldn't have a let's say a large team. I think this should apply the same to 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 teams working remotely. It shouldn't change because in the way the practices and the tasks and so on shouldn't change too. So this should be the same. What do you think, man? Yeah, apart from that, it just depends on the maturity uh, maturity of the team and the practices. Uh, because you can have large teams. Although, again, I agree with what Carlos mentioned, independently of being the two pizza rule or not, uh, it helps because you're, it's less connections. If you look at uh, connect everyone, it's less uh, connectors. But uh, yeah, you, it, it is possible to have large groups. It just makes it a bit more difficult. Yeah. Okay. I have some more questions in the chat. Yeah, Antonio Alvarez is asking about aggressiveness when people are typing uh, on the chat. And yeah, because they they will always talk more on the chat than if they are uh, with each other. Do you have, he's asking if you have any tip for that. Yeah. Is this is what Nuno said before, which is try to assume positive intent I know this isn't always easy, but try as much as possible to assume positive intent. And if you aren't comfortable with what's being said, try to as soon as possible have a face-to-face uh, -face chat with the person, even if it's a Slack call or something like that to try to clarify. If by uh, if you see that, imagine in this case, you're a team lead or it's just your colleagues and you're seeing they're going on a negative stride, uh, Antonio, just be the facilitator to help out and uh, hey people how we can how about we jump into a into a call to to clear this out instead of just going into this two hour chat that will lead nowhere i think we can even say that at equal experts i remember experiencing something similar in the beginning where you know you first I would say you first need to build relationships and you will start probably not perceiving things in the same way and as aggressive as you're perceiving now. So yeah, my, my suggestion would be, apart from assuming that people always come from the positive uh, side, um, try as much as possible to build those relationships by having calls, video calls, um, within the team and one-on-ones if, if needed. So if you feel that you need to be closer to someone specific, do have calls with that, with that person, do have, try to have informal moments um, with that person. Someone in the chat also uh, referred to what I said before about uh, the Fibonacci sequence using Slack, which is interesting. I think it's a good tip for the, for the question before this one. Okay, anyone has any question or want to say something? Okay, Rui is asking, I'm sure you have met remote skeptical people. Do you have any tips to address this? Uh, there's, a, there's a lot of uh, skeptical, <laughs> remote <laughs> skeptical people. Although nowadays I believe that at least in the countries uh, that are mainly affected by uh, COVID-19, they're, uh, they're trying a bit of their uh, skepticism, uh, right? Uh, the thing is, um, it's, it's hard to convince in some ways. I think that if you start by uh, delivering, showing value, the, the, the sooner you can, people will see that uh, in, it's not the same thing, but it will it will make a difference. And um, so it's a matter of delivering value for me. I don't know if my colleagues that are online have the different opinions, but uh, I hope that after we go through all this crisis that we have less remote skeptical people. Okay, I have uh, some, some suggestion, which is, uh, which is basically the same suggestion I give to, to the teams I'm working with uh, in, in Berlin, which is, uh, when you try to, to add something, some new practice or some new tool or something uh, of the sorts to, to a team, 
uh, it shouldn't be just, uh, how do you say, a feeling that this will work. You should be basing this decision on any kind of metric. And for instance, you can, Im you can imagine or you can try to measure your team's productivity and you can imagine or you can try to figure out some metrics that can be related to productivity. And you can, let's say, set the hypothesis that this particular change as having a, a team working fully remote will have a good influence in certain metrics. You can try this, let's say, convince people to follow this hypothesis or at least this experience. And after one month or two months or something like that, try to measure it again and see if it works. If this works, this is a, a way to gain trust and also a way for people to be used to, say, using data to guide their, their own decisions. Uh, there's a question from Gonzalo. How do you handle small clarity grooming? So free amigo sessions with the team that is working 10 hours ahead of you. Yep, that is that is quite hard. That's what I, <laughs> I mentioned. So uh, what I would say is if, if it's something recurrent, um, try to bounce between um, your time zone and Australia so that some days you wake up earlier and some other they go or to bed or have dinner a bit a bit later so uh, but it it's a challenge also it's a real it's a real challenge so I, I don't have a specific way uh, to do it I believe that if it's a need that you knew it, it you need to do it sync um, and you cannot do it async uh, someone will have to wake up earlier or go to bed later or something like that. Um, and I would say it's it's around that. Carlos, I don't know if you have a different opinion on this. Uh, about this situation in particular, I think it's uh, it's not an easy thing to solve. I think uh, what you said is uh, is the only thing that it comes to my mind too, which is try to adapt a bit so that you have at least one or two hours. How do you say at the same time? Working in simultaneous between the two time zones, it might be hard, but if you have that, probably you can, you can have all those meetings that require a whole team, people in Portugal and people in Australia in this case, to be present for, the, for these particular meetings. Okay. Uh, there's another question, right? Uh, yeah, from, from... Antoni. Antoni is uh, asking, I currently work in my living room. <laughs> Any more tips <laughs> to get head out of work since... Uh, he division. can change the uh, division. Is it possible to stop every half, every one and a half hours or something like that to go for a walk or at least go to the kitchen and have a coffee or something like that? Because if you stay at your living room your entire day, it will be crazy anyway. Just yeah. hide your laptop <laughs> and lock it. Gonna, yeah, sorry, I was going to suggest, so if you, if you have a different laptop for work than your personal one, Yep. that helps like you only have your work laptop or you should you know just get up get dressed to work and then when you finish that's what i do when i finish i just change something in the way that i dress that goes like i'm in you know home mode um even if it is get your shoes on and then take them off something like that um but yeah and now you can't walk outside, but I would just do something different or go to the kitchen or something. Okay, Rusilver is asking about availability and how he knows that someone is available or not. I can answer this because on Slack you have uh, you have a proper tool to do this because you have status on Slack. You can you can use this to tell everyone if you are available or not. Yeah. We talked before about the, how do you say, team charter and team practices. You can introduce this that uh, Duarte just mentioned as part of your team charter so that people have this, let's say, uh, basic rules to follow. And if people don't follow, you can always, uh, let's say, let them know in retros or in one-on-ones or even in stand-ups. And one thing that some teams do is normally... There, is, there are some teams that start the call where they are pairing remotely and let others see that that call, that call exists to allow anyone to join in and ask some question if someone is not uh, answering to an urgent question because sometimes 
uh, we like to we like to remove all the notifications while we are uh, programming or pre pre programming with anyone. Yeah, and you can you can also sync your calendar to Slack so that it automatically shows when you have a meeting or you're on, you're on a call, for example. So it, that will help. But That's we're picking helpful. up on the tools that we use. Uh, at Equal Expert, so uh, I don't know if uh, just try to check. Uh, I think it was Rui, right? In, in this case, if it's Slack, uh, it says as my colleagues uh, mentioned. But uh, between the team calendar and Slack, you shouldn't have any problem. Do you use any any other tool that you you feel that you have this problem? And you shouldn't. You should feel. And apart from that, you should feel at ease to to. Uh, well, nag is very, or just ping the other person with a friendly reminder and just put it friendly reminder will help that just update your, uh, your Slack status. That will help us work better as a team. We also have a, another question. Yeah, from, from Hafa. Hafa. How do you guys make sure you have visibility that things are getting done properly? Geometrics, demos? I can show you the, the experience of, of what, uh, I'm doing in my teams now and what we've done in the past, which is we use, we've been using either Jira or Trello, but in a way so the uh, tool itself doesn't, doesn't matter, but to try to understand if the teams are working properly, we are measuring in these teams uh, that I'm working with, we decided to follow the four golden rules you have in the Accelerate book, which are basically the lead time, uh, the mean time to recover, the, the deployment frequency, and there is one else, and I can't remember. But basically we've been using these four tools, uh, four metrics, and we have these metrics taken from Jira, and they are in a dashboard that it's in a big screen in the Teams room, so everyone, and this has a, a URL that's accessible also for everyone that's at home. So, and about the demos, this is something that we do, we don't have this, uh, every two weeks or every week or something like that, we have this whenever something is done, we do a demo to the relevant stakeholders. This is the, the, the practices uh, me and some other people introduced in the teams we're working with. Maybe yeah, quite has similar, some, no, yeah. quite similar to the ones. Uh, so uh, usually with the teams I work with, I don't save the demo. We don't need to save the demos for every two weeks whenever you should demo because there might be problems. You don't have to wait for that much time. There's uh, several, uh, you can get some metrics out of Jira. There's Screenful, which I use a lot. And I really like it independently of your board is Jira, Microsoft Teams or um, Trello even. Uh, just try to understand what is the flow, what are your needs and what, what do you wanna get out of this? Yeah. If by any means, uh, Rafa, this was not uh, enough, I'm happy to chat any other day. Just ping me on LinkedIn or something like that. Yeah, same with me. So I'm not sure if I said before, but the tool we were using to show the metrics to everyone in the team and even to the stakeholders uh, is the Screenful. And this is this connects directly to Jira or to Trello, and it can even connect to some other systems I don't know of, but it, it has integration to some other, to it. Okay, we have some people saying goodbye. This is good. Thanks for joining. Yeah. For the ones that are leaving, any more questions? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, don't be shy. <laughs> I think that's it. Uh, when does the piece arrive? <laughs> <laughs> we need to wait some weeks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, guys, if there isn't questions, um, yeah, it, we'll try to do this every two weeks. Uh, so next one, you, you, it will be on 2nd of April. And yeah, stay in touch. And thank yeah, you. For the, just to, I think it was on the meetup. It's uh, with uh, Gio. Um, and she'll talk about the imposter syndrome. So... And that this video be will be available uh, within two weeks. Uh, no, next week, most likely, uh, online. We will just add it. I don't know if we'll leave this um, comments, but at least the main part of, of the core of the talk will we'll publish it online. Mm -hmm. uh, and Before thanks everyone for joining.
Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Thank you, everyone, for joining the, uh, the, in these we, hard times. Oh, just a, a kind of reading list on the... Yep, I'll do that uh, in a comment on Meetup, Rui, in five minutes, okay? Mm, I was just saying thank you to everyone that joined us in these hard times. It's good to have uh, 50 people uh, uh, watching the, the presentation. It was really good. Thank you. Yeah, and stay safe. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Bye, bro.